Welcome to the ballpark, Southeastern and LSU. And if you're just now joining us, two and two is the count. The Paxton Kling, our leadoff batter for the Tigers. A little bit of an early start on us here tonight. <laughs> and Kling fouls that one off, two strike approach for the center fielder. Comes in hitting 297 on the year uh, from Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania. That sounds like a fun place to be from. Sure does, all the way in PA. And you know, Jay Johnson, there's a lot of great recruiting, not only out of high school, but as the, out of the portal as well. Just goes to show you, of course, when, when you're a program, the caliber of LSU and you've had the success uh, that the Tigers have had uh, over the years, uh, you can recruit pretty much anywhere. And uh, Kling is an example of that. And this one is skied in the infield. That one will be caught, so out number one. And that was Brom, the first baseman for SLU. Good at bat there by Kling, though. Uh, as the leadoff man, especially in the first inning, you want to make that starting pitcher work. Uh, he did a nice job there seeing seven pitches and, uh, you know, made uh, as Palm work for him. Up to the plate is Josh Pearson in the two-hole. The Louisiana native, and he takes strike one, batting from the left-hand side. 250 on the year, three home runs, six RBI, actually second on the team uh, in home runs up to this point in the season. Yeah, obviously not the tallest guy, but you can see he's compactly built, has some pop in his bat. And here he rolls it over, Brom able to make the play, and. So far, so good for Dalton Asphalm and Southeastern. But up comes Tommy Tanks. Tommy Tanks, the guy that we highlighted uh, in the open. Uh, like we said, Coach Jay Johnson said, he hasn't gotten going yet. If he does with this lineup around him, it is going to be a uh, very dangerous proposition for these SEC pitching staffs. And White with a huge swing, swings through it 0-1. Aspalm, nice job there going right at him uh, with the fastball, kind of riding in a little bit and bites one through it. And this one's fouled off so quickly, 0-2. Aspalm trying to go three up, three down on this potent Tiger line. And that's what you want to do. If you, can, if you can get the crowd into it, if you can get them one, two, three, and then get some momentum on your end, big for the Lions. And this one is kind of jammed to Salvaggio who fires for the out, so three up, three down. And SLU will come up to bat in the bottom of the first, see if they can break this goose egg. Anderson figures to be a key cog going forward, if he, especially if he keeps pitching the way he has so far on this young season. Absolutely, and, and you know, and, and the thing is, you don't want any injuries, but you're only one injury away from him having to step up into that weekend role or a couple of ineffective starts from one of those guys. Um, and, and having a guy that can step in is quite the luxury. Here's Jude Hall for Southeastern, our Southland Conference hitter of the week a week ago. Hit uh, seven for 15 that week. Uh, some big hits as that one misses outside. Some big hits though uh, for the Lions and, and Coach Bobby Barbier said he really liked uh, that Hall was able to get those with men on base. Um, that's very important. Anderson delivers just on that up and in corner for strike number two. Good pitch. If he can live right there, it's going to be difficult uh, for a Southeastern as uh, not much you can do with a pitch like that. 13 strikeouts in nine innings and make that 14. Anderson fans the first batter of the game for Southeastern. Paul looked like he was kind of swinging for the fences on that one, wanted to set the tone early. Nice job by Anderson. You see a good look at the freshman left-hander uh, right there. Good job, uh, nothing fancy. And uh, Coach Barbier said we've got to get him out of what he wants to do. That one, advantage Anderson. Here's Justin Williams, the left fielder for the green and gold up to the plate. Williams comes in 313 on the year, two homers, five runs batted in. And 
he swings through that one again. So Anderson uh, kind of having his way here in the early going. Uh, six pitches, five of them in the strike zone. Old announcers jinx up and in on that one <laughs> for ball number one. Never fails. <laughs> Anderson still in a pitcher's count, trying to strike out the opening two batters of this ball game. Kind of a waste pitch there. Looked like uh, that one might have slipped out of his hand a little bit, uh, but uh, still uh, in a good spot here, two and two. Uh, he's got a lot of options of uh, what he wants to do. Looks like uh, they're going to kind of set up on the outside. That is where they go. What a pitch. The big sweeping breaking ball. And Justin Williams was just frozen at the plate. Out number two, two strikeouts. Can the true freshman strike out the side? Good pitch there by Anderson. You talk about him being at 91-94, and then he comes right back with Uncle Charlie there right over the heart of the plate. And Williams uh, frozen in his tracks. Here's Ryan Brown for Southeastern. The big lefty junior out of Katy, Texas. We saw him with the glove at first base, making a couple of nice plays in the top half of this inning. Brome at 231 on the year, no home run, seven RBI. Southeastern only comes in hitting 256, uh, but getting on base at nearly 40% clip. So the average not where you want it to be, but they're making things happen. And that one just, it was a good pitch, just on the inside corner from Anderson. Two and one to count. Big change to see those guys looking down at their wrists and <laughs> with the pitch comms as opposed to looking into those signs. Almost reminds you of a quarterback in football and strike. Thir or that was strike number two. What was the umpire getting a little excited? <laughs> it is two and two the count. We'll see if Anderson can make it strike three on this pitch here. Already struck out the first two batters of the ball game. Swing and a miss. Cannot start much better than that. You can Travinsky tags him out. We'll be back. Uh, three, three in the third innings on the year, a couple of strikeouts. Uh, still a good ERA, though, at uh, 2.7. And you love to see that, a Baton Rouge native pitching against LSU. Just goes to show you again, we talked about LSU and their uh, national recruiting. But there's a lot of talent there in the Baton Rouge area. A lot of great high school programs. Central, uh, one of those is, uh, as well, have had a lot of success. Sent a lot of guys to LSU over the years. You think of the McClure brothers uh, back uh, in the 90s. Uh, Todd playing uh, the hot corner for the baseball team. Trey playing center. Or, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Todd playing center. Trey playing at uh, third base for the Tigers. And Brady Neal up to bat. He's in a hitter's count, three and one. Let's see his as, if Aspalm gives him something a little too good to hit here on the hitter's count. And he gets around on it. Fair ball down the line. Should be at least two bases, depending on how quickly SLU can get it in, and they do. But a stand-up double for Brady Neal and the Bayou Bengals. Strike early here in the top of the second. Neal's fifth double of the year. Uh, just a good job of hitting the ball where it was pitched. Uh, he is now leading uh, this Tiger uh, lineup uh, in uh, two base hits. Came in hitting 357 on the year, uh, three homers, 11 RBI. Uh, so now it's going to be interesting with Travinsky coming up uh, to see uh, what Jay Johnson elects to do here. Uh, obviously, um, he's not going to have Travinsky sacrifice bunting, I don't think. But um, how do the Lions and now the uh, umpires getting together here how do the Lions attack this, and how do they handle this uh, LSU threat in the second inning? You see a little friendly banter between the infielders, the Southeastern and Brady Neal. Our first hit of the ball game comes courtesy of LSU. Looks like the, what are they looking at here, maybe? Maybe to see if it was fair, I'm assuming, but sure looked like it to me off the bat. Tough call, but yeah, I think looking at uh, looking at that live and even looking at the replay, I think that's a fair ball, and uh, and rightfully so. Neil should be standing at second base. We'll see what the umpires say. Just a nice job though of pitching that or hitting that ball where it's pitched. He didn't try to do too much. Um, was able to yank it down the line past Brome. 
uh, for the uh, extra base hit if it stands. And Neal really, as you said, hit it where it was pitched, that inside offering from Aspalm. And you see Coach Bobby Barbier, first-year man, came over from Northwestern State. Southland Conference, the Southland Conference. You know, talking about uh, Coach Barbier, uh, off to a great start, nine and four. And, uh, you know, and, and he, we talked to him yesterday, he talked about he wants his team to have a growth mentality. And it doesn't matter if they're four and nine, nine and four. Uh, kind of like McKenzie said at the beginning of the game, if you're playing like you're capable of playing, the wins and the losses will take care of themselves. Southeastern has been uh, off to a great start so far this season. They certainly have. We talked about um, earlier, I believe, in the pregame, but at uh, East Carolina, they beat them number 11 in the country, 11 to nine Southeastern defeated them. Then they beat Cal State Fullerton five to one. That was actually on Friday. And then they did sandwich that with a loss to Purdue, but two wins over what Jay Johnson told us earlier in the week, two of the best mid-major programs in the country in Cal State Fullerton and East Carolina. And Bobby Barbier's side was up to the task and then some. But obviously this is their stiffest test yet of the season. Let's see if Neil tags Coley, fires at the third. It'll oh. be close. He comes off the bag, but he is safe. And that was a nice throw by Parker Coley out of right field. Made that a lot closer than expected. Absolutely. You know, Neil, the catcher running, not, you know, catchers aren't known uh, for their speed necessarily. And Coley made a great throw. Uh, got behind the ball and just a second late uh, on that, uh, but a good throw. Uh, that's going to make those runners think twice uh, when that ball's hit to right field. And now up to the plate, freshman Steven Milam, and he watches strike number one. Good pitch there on the inside corner. The freshman uh, leading this Tiger team 4 5 uh, on the year. Uh, no home runs, 10 RBI um, and another good pitch there from Aspalm. Aspalm getting ahead in the count, exactly what you want to do with a 90 feet from scoring and just one out. Yeah, very big if he's going to, uh, if he can keep this run from scoring. Oh, tough pitch to lay off of right there. Uh, he tried that outside corner and Milam uh, showing a good eye. That's a very tough one to lay off of for two strikes. One and two the count to Milam. As Palm with the delivery, you know, big breaking ball should bring home a run. And Shea Thomas makes the play at first. Good uh, piece of hitting there uh, by Milam. Uh, put that ball in play um, and, and brought home that run uh, from third base there to uh, make it a one to nothing uh, ball game here. And a nice job, uh, like we said, by uh, Salvaggio coming in, getting that, uh, getting that uh, play there. And a good, strong throw. And that's going to be a strike 0 and 1. And Jared Bear Jones up to the plate for the Tigers. And he fouls this one off. And actually, from our vantage point, Josh, or excuse me, Brady Neal is still on third base, so yeah, it, it remains scoreless. Yeah, it didn't look like he was uh, he was running there. Uh, as that ball hit to uh, another good uh, pitch there, tough one to take. Um, yeah, from our vantage point, it might have been a little bit too close to uh, uh, to him there to uh, try to make that play. Um, telling uh, if uh, Southeastern can keep him off the board here. Definitely so nice. Glove work by the shortstop. And now here's the punch out as Palm retires LSU and Bear Jones. So Southeastern get out of the inning without surrendering a run. Their bats will be up when we return. And that's a confidence builder as As Palm goes forward not only tonight, but throughout the rest of the season. And man, that breaking ball. I'd like to see, take a measuring stick and see how far that <laughs> thing drops. It almost looks like it starts almost at the chest area of Shea Thomas and then drops on that bottom corner. Anderson does miss there, but man, LSU do have a very talented lefty. 
pitcher on their hands here. What's the old song, uh, living on the edge? That's where he's been, uh, and he's had success uh, so far in the ball game. And if he can stay there, uh, Shea Thomas, you see the leading uh, uh, the Lions in hits right now. If he can stay there, it's going to be hard uh, for Southeastern to really square up uh, that ball and uh, have a lot of hard contact. And this one runs inside, evens the count at two apiece. Interesting to see how Southeastern comes out the bottom of this second inning. You had um, a big top half of the inning. And a swing and a miss. Again, four batters faced, four strikeouts for Cade Anderson. What I was going to say is you have a big top half of the inning. You prevent that run from scoring. Can you come out and can you capitalize on that momentum? Uh, but Anderson so far is just not letting it. Take another look at this, just that curveball. It is so sharp, the bite on that pitch. And Thomas, I mean, leads the team and hits for a reason, batting cleanup and just swings right through it. Now up to bat, Jake Hayes for SLU. Jake Hayes, one of the guys who came uh, with Coach Bobby Barbier from uh, Northwestern State. And I think he can really be um, a key uh, for the Lions hitting in the middle of that lineup. If uh, he can really get going, uh, that's going to be big for this Southeastern ball club going forward. And already faced with a one and two count. Here's Anderson, and Hayes does a good job to stay alive. Only hitting 195 uh, up to this point in the season. Uh, but again, getting on base at a 421 clip. You know, uh, for years it was all about batting average in baseball. Uh, but, you know, when you look at how are guys uh, able to get on base, is another good pitch on that outside corner. Cade Anderson make it five batters face, five strikeouts. And this Southeastern lineup not quite sure what to do at the plate against this true freshman. Another good pitch right there. Um, like we said, we talked about his fastball, but he is just uh, has pinpoint control up to this point. There it is again. First pitch strike, staying ahead in the count is Anderson. And this is Balin Sorensen for SLU, manning the plate, and he'll just watch that one. 0 oh 2 now the count, Anderson. He couldn't do it, could he? 6 of 6. We shall see on the 0 and 2 pitch, and he does. Six strikeouts for Kate Anderson. LSU's freshman is shoving right now for Southeastern. He will face Mac Bingham, the eight-hole hitter, left fielder for LSU as the top of the lineup looms large with Paxton Kling in the hole. Bingham, a uh, 300 hitter uh, on the year, uh, one homer, seven RBIs on the season. Good pitch right there from Dalton Aspon to even the count. One in one to Mac Bingham. A last inning LSU got a leadoff double We'll see if history repeats itself, and as Palm says, no thank you, one and two. You know, when you talk about these midweek games, Chase, it, it really, uh, it's interesting to see how different teams approach it. Shea Thomas, it's going to be a long hop, and what a stretch over there at first base to record the out, Ryan Brome, and Shea Thomas with a, a little unconventional, but hops it on the turf, and it works for out number one. Ryan Brome is six foot one, and he needed every last inch of it there to stretch out and make that. Not the best throw from Thomas, but Brome, nice job stretching out and able to keep his foot on the bag uh, to uh, get the out there, the Texas Tech transfer, making a nice dig. And now that is a nice pitch from Aspone to Michael Braswell the third, the junior out of Mableton, Georgia, in a South Carolina transfer. But to finish that thought about the midweek games, it's interesting to see how teams approach these. You know, um, Coach Johnson said earlier in the week when we talked to him, it's all about the RPI. You know, if they can come in, uh, get a win here against a good program, as that one misses, uh, then that helps them. And then if you're Southeastern, it helps you as well if you can get another quality win against the defending national champion. Um, so really, this one is skied the center field, no problem out there for Southeastern. 
Jude Hall retires Braswell. And now the top of the lineup will come up and Paxton Kling for the Tigers, see if they could do any damage with two outs. So really, you know, to finish that thought, Coach Johnson said it best, but I think it applies to both teams. He said, we want to beat these guys, and then we want to have them have success against everybody else. If you're Southeastern, you're in the same boat because this could be a big win for you going forward. And here's the first pitch just outside. Paxton Kling leads this team in hit by pitches already seven times he's been plunked so far this season in just 12 games, and he watches that one. And I believe we're getting our sevens mixed up. Dalton Aspalm started the game, but this is Aiden Vosberg, number 17, not 27, on the bump for Southeastern. So Coach Barbier trying to change some arms and go through this staff. Is really, I mean, you said a midweek game early in the year, trying to see all what you've got really um, to work with in your pitching staff, some quality innings, and especially for Southeastern against the reigning national champion and, and number two LSU Tiger. Absolutely, and these are high leverage innings right now. I mean, this is a scoreless game uh, as we move into the third inning. And wow, what a pitch from Vosberg. Strike three on Kling, and we have a bit of a pitcher's duel. No easy out. I was going to say, Ole Miss bringing up the rear at eight and five. And uh, all of those programs are programs that have had success uh, in the tournament and in Omaha. And that's just one half of the conference. Right, as you have Vanderbilt, Florida, just to name a couple over there in the east. And Anderson is true on the first pitch and a swing and a miss quickly, 0-2 as Anderson just is making quick work of the Southeastern lineup so far. I'm going to have to look and see what the what the LSU record is for strikeouts to start a ball game. Is, uh, of course, uh, the Tigers have had some great ones over the years, going back to Ben McDonald, Paul Skeens, uh, the number one pick uh, last year. But uh, Anderson, and again, if he can live right there, he just missed there, but if he can live right there, it's going to be a long night for these Lion hitters. Parker Coley, center fielder for Southeastern, faced with the one and two count. See if he can become the first base runner of this game for the Lions, and no can do. Seven straight strikeouts for Kate Anderson to start this game. Unfathomable if you think about it. He is a true freshman. And look at this. This is that 91 uh, mile an hour fastball that we talked about up in the zone and just absolutely nothing that Coley could do with that. Salvaggio watches strike one, and one thing is Salvaggio, Slidell, Louisiana native, junior now at shortstop, North Shore high product. But Anderson just in a groove, and you see how quickly he just works on the mound. Salvaggio, however, right center field, and nice catch by Kling up against the wall. Jay Johnson told us during the week that this might be, in his eyes, the best defensive outfield in all of college baseball, and Kling making that look pretty easy. But finally, at last, Salvaggio barrels up a baseball, and you see the <laughs> congratulatory <laughs> high fives, and rightly so. And maybe, just maybe, SLU can string together some at-bats more like that one. Salvaggio has to feel like he just hit a walk-off home run uh, <laughs> making solid contact like that. Um, as an outfielder, though, you know, hey, you want to have some chances out there. When the pitcher uh, is striking out the first seven, it's hard to keep your focus. And it's 0-2 now. The Jeremy Raider, the DH batting ninth for SLU. And that big curveball misses up and away from Anderson. And Raider from Springfield, Missouri is the junior. Only his seventh uh, game of the season. As he skies this one to right. And that one will be camped under and caught. So through three innings, we're still scoreless here in Hammond, Louisiana. As we go to the top of the full season poll, I think they're going to finish a lot higher than that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can get quality wins like over a Fullerton, over an East Carolina, if you can get a win against LSU, even if you don't win that conference tournament, you're able to potentially steal a second bid for the conference. 
and Southeast are no stranger to the NCAA tournament. And they made it two years ago and went to the Auburn Regional where they did go 0-2, but still a feat won the Southland Conference. And really have been arguably the best program in the Southland Conference for the better part of a decade. Absolutely, you know, and, and if you talk to athletic director J.R. Teagues, you know, a lot of people maybe question why make that change from Matt Reiser to Coach Bobby Barbier, and he says, look, you don't wait until uh, you hit the bottom uh, to make a change. You know, the program, uh, if you want to say a 500 record last year, had bottomed out um, at 25 and 25, but he didn't like the way it was going. You bring in Coach Barbier, and uh, and so far so good with a nine and four record. Certainly so with two marquee wins against Cal State Fullerton in East Carolina. And Aiden Vosberg dealing to Josh Pearson, the two hole batter, right fielder for LSU, full count to lead things off in the four. And this one is gonna be slapped out of play, foul ball, and we'll do it all again in just a few moments. Going back to what Coach Johnson said, these guys are having great at bats, making uh, the pitchers, whether it's uh, Aspalm or Vosberg, work here um, to uh, retire them. And strike three, Vosberg fans Pearson for out number one. And I gotta tell you, Kate Anderson has stolen the headlines, the LSU freshman, but Southeastern staff between Aspalm and Vosberg have been dealing so far. I mean, we're scoreless, only allowed one hit. And that was actually, um, was it Brady Neal, I believe, in the second inning to lead things off. But besides that, no hits for this LSU lineup, something they're certainly not accustomed to. Aspalm struck out the last batter he faced. Um, two of the uh, four that uh, Vosberg has faced, uh, he struck out as well. Uh, struck out the last two, but a little bit different animal up there right now in Tommy White. Definitely so, and that's where you want to live low and away just on that corner, 0-2, and, and Vosberg leaves that one over the heart of the plate, White, and that might be two as he's rounding first. And he will stay put yeah. at first. Not known for his speed, Tommy White, but definitely got some pop in that bat. So we all remember the walk-off home run against Wake Forest and Omaha. Look at that, just a good swing, compact, keeps his head down. Drives that ball into left field. Uh, the junior, uh, look for him to uh, to be a high draft pick if he decides to uh, make his way to the pros uh, this summer. And now Brady Neal fouls that one off. Is one for one, second on the team in slugging percentage. Coach Johnson told us earlier in the week, he says, this is probably the best catching core uh, that I've ever had. And uh, Neil, a big part of that, you see slugging 821 uh, and doing the little things there, squaring to bunt as well. Can't quite stab it. 0-2 now the count. And that just goes to show you, Chase, how important this run is and how important this game is to LSU. You've got your number four hole hitter uh, squaring to bunt in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss, and Vosper gets another strikeout. And, man, he has been dealing the junior in LSU Eunice transfer. Jero, Louisiana native. LSU Eunice, a, uh, another uh, school that has had a lot of success, uh, won a national championship uh, in the past. Uh, there's talent all over this state. And, uh, you know, um, especially here in the, uh, the Hammond North Shore area uh, where uh, Baton Rouge, you know, there's a, just talent all over this state and uh, no reason why uh, both of these programs should not be successful, and they are. Absolutely. Well said, Louisiana. Certainly a hotbed of talent in baseball, and really, you'd almost say all sports. Football, too, as well. Oh, absolutely. Basketball, I mean. If we played lacrosse, I'm sure we'd be good at that as well. <laughs> and Salvaggio should be a routine play. A high throw. Ooh, Ooh and he's safe. We'll see if. Coach Barbier protests. Wonder if we might get a review there as Travinsky was hauling tail down the first baseline. And looked to me that Brome got the tag, but 
looked to me like he did as well. Um, let's see if we if we get a replay on this in a minute. Looked to me like, yeah, looked like uh, Brome was able to get the tag down. Um, good, strong throw just sailed on him a little bit. Looked like he got the tag, but he was on the, uh, the back. So I think this is a good call, and that's probably going to be charged an error uh, to Salvaggio, um, I would guess. And we're going to look at it one more time. Ooh, that's tough. Well, I'm glad we're not on fire <laughs> tonight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and give our crew credit. They did an outstanding job of, uh, of, of getting that. Um, I think you're right. I think he got the tag down. Uh, but I think it's uh, when he got the tag down, Travinsky's foot was right on the bag. Um, I think that's going to be the call. But Southeastern is applauding, so it is overturned. Wow, so Essen laid the tag on Travinsky just a millisecond before Travinsky's foot touched down on first base. I agree, and, and look, that just goes to show you how difficult umpiring this game is. That's a bang-bang play. Those guys have one shot and getting it right. And now Cade Anderson returns on the bump one and one, and he has been lights out, seven strikeouts to nine batters face. And this is Jude Hall, our impact player and Southland Conference hitter of the week from a week ago up to the plate. See if he could represent the first base runner for the Lions. And well, <laughs> goes right back to that, uh, that well, Anderson, uh, been perfect up to this point. Struck out the first seven. Uh, going for number eight. That is fouled back. Um, Salvaggio and Raider, they've, like I said, they've got to feel like superstars right now for just making contact. And, I mean, Anderson, it's like he's throwing wiffle balls up there, especially with that curveball. Yeah, Southeastern has struggled to get around on it, but Jude Hall hanging tough, two and two, fouls a couple off, prolonging this A-B. And that's what you want. You want to have uh, those good at bats as that one dips low, especially uh, out of your leadoff uh, batter. Uh, you want him to be able to get on base because that allows you to do so much with the rest of that lineup. You can bunt, you can hit and run. And that is a quality A-B as Jude Hall gets on base. For Southeastern, their first base runner of the ball game all the way here in the top of the fourth as Anderson was flawless through the lineup the first time around, striking out the first seven batters and retiring eight and nine, but does surrender a walk to Jude Hall. Let's see if this proves costly for the Tigers and trying to keep Hall honest over there at first base is Anderson. That's Hall's seventh walk of the season. Um, he has stolen three bases on the year. Southeastern a perfect 12 for 12 uh, up to this point in the stolen base department. Don't think they'll be sending him uh, just yet, though. Of course, now you want to get in that hitter's count before you do. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Barbier plays this one here in the fourth. Definitely will be. As curious to hear your thoughts if Maybe a hit and run could be on here with the two-hole hitter, or if Coach Barbier opts to just let Justin Williams swing away. But definitely appears Anderson is a bit bothered by Jude Hall. I mean, it's his first base runner all game, so he is picked off now more than once. I, I think the hit and run is definitely a possibility here, especially because Anderson has been in the strike zone uh, most of the night um, as he misses there. But, uh, you know, with a guy who, who's been in the zone, uh, you uh, are confident that the hitter's going to make contact and not hang that runner out to dry. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Williams fouls it off, one and two the count. And I'll tell you what, the first and second batter, second time around facing Anderson, are making contact. Obviously, Hall fouled off a couple, drew a walk, but seeing more pitches out of the young lefty, wonder how long his leash is for Jay Johnson and just his third career start has been flawless to this point. But right as I say that, he collects his eighth strikeout of the evening, retiring Williams. The thing is, it's been, he's gotten, let's see, let me count here. One, two, three, four, five. That was his sixth strikeout swinging, and he's got a couple looking as well. 
and uh, just nothing you can do with that. That's an unhittable pitch. Even if uh, if Williams gets to that, that's probably a weak ground ball to first base and maybe a 3-6-3 double play. Here's Brome in our first hit of the game, and here comes Hall to third. The throw was on the mark, but it looked like maybe lost that sight of the ball was Tommy White. I'll tell you the lights here at Alumni Field. Definitely can affect the fielders if that ball, I'm, I'm sure that's what happened because looked like a perfect throw from right field. And you see Brome, and like you said, pounding the zone is Anderson, so Brome keen to it, swings at the first pitch. Here's the key right there. Anderson right where he needs to be backing up. If that ball rolls around, it's a one nothing Southeastern lead here now. Uh, Anderson has a chance as they're going to go talk to him, kind of settle the freshman down a little bit. Smart, heady play, though, by the freshman because if he's not there, he's trailing in his ball game right now, and Brome is at second base. That's a great point right there, Chris. Heads up by the freshman and uh, hitting the runner um, a little bit there. Interesting now to see what Coach Barbier does with uh, Thomas up uh, at the plate here. Obviously, uh, you, you don't want to hit into a double play here. Um, runners on the corners, let's see what they elect to do. And uh, Brome actually was able to leg out to second base on that one, so runners on second and third with one out. And Southeastern, Shea Thomas, clean up. He's got two RBIs staring him in the face. Anderson deals, and that'll be fouled off. One and one remains the count. Anderson, I'll give him a single, and then uh, he's awarded second. Uh, on the throw, so uh, big opportunity here for the Lions here in the fourth inning. First time that Anderson has really been rattled up to this point. Let's see if the Lions can take advantage. And Thomas swings through that one, and that is a huge out for Cade Anderson, out number two. And Southeastern in danger of leaving two runners in scoring position. Nine strikeouts on the night. Uh, in the words of Ed Rooney, nine times that the Lions have struck out. And uh, now it's up to Hayes, uh, who, as we said, a grad transfer uh, came from uh, Northwestern. And uh, just another good pitch there by Anderson. Hey, yeah, man, when you can get that curveball in with confidence on the first pitch for a strike like that, it does a world of good for a pitcher. Well, Chase, you know the most important pitch is strike one. And if you can get it, uh, it opens up so much for you there. And the next most important one is now 0-2, which is where he sits again. JK's in the hole, 0-2. Southeastern does have runners on second and third here with two outs. We are scoreless, bottom of the fourth, if you're just now joining us. Number two, LSU in a midweek battle with Southeastern Louisiana and Hammond. And that'll be strike three, Anderson. Showing some emotion, double digit K's for the true freshman. And through four, we are scoreless. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Um, I doubt that Coach Johnson thought he would be in a 0 0 game here in the fifth inning, but now those wheels may start to turn just a little bit uh, on uh, do we send the runner? Are we playing for maybe one run here? Because they've been hard to come by in this one here this evening. And here is Bear Jones. You can see why. That is the nickname he dons. Jared is his first name, but goes by Bear. And he is an intimidating force at the plate. Got a cousin named, nicknamed Bear as well. I don't think I could pull that off. <laughs> and Vosberg tries to keep Milam honest over there at first. Well, this is big. You've got the bottom of the order. Uh, do up here. Uh, if you can, uh, if you can keep him at first, maybe get a double play ground ball here. Uh, that changes the uh, entire complexion of the inning, and so uh, definitely look for Vosberg to pay attention, close attention to Mike Bear Jones in a bit of a hitter's count, two and one, and now he really is in a hitter's count, three and one. And that one just barely missed, almost caught the inside part of the plate. Milam looked to get a running lead there, so uh, keep an eye on him over there at first base. Uh, he might be off, especially on a three-run count. 
And this one is a jam shot. The shift was on. And a nice play over there at second by SLU. That was Jake Hayes. And, and that's the frustrating thing. You said it. The shift was on. If Hayes is where he normally lines up, that's a 4-6-3 double play, and you're out of the inning now. Or, I'm sorry, you have you have two out now. Um, nice by, uh, by as uh, goes over, makes a nice play. Knows he has some time, makes a good, strong throw. And now uh, Vosberg going to try to wiggle his way out of this inning. Up steps Mac Bingham, batting eighth as the left fielder for the Tigers. Runner in scoring position. Milam standing on second after a leadoff single. And Vosberg is behind in the count as the pitcher 2-0. and And we'll see if he offers up anything juicy to Mac Bingham here. Bingham dancing, uh, or check that, Milam dancing off the second. Bingham grounded out to third um, to lead off the third inning. And looking to hit the ball to the right side here, move that runner over uh, to third, if nothing else. And then goes right back up the middle, and that's probably going to bring in the run. And Milam trots home with ease. We finally have a run, ladies and gentlemen. Top of the fifth, number two, LSU. Goes up 1-0 on Southeastern. And an RBI single from Mac Bingham bringing home Stephen Milam as the Bayou Bengals strike first. Bingham's eighth RBI of the year. And again, just a good piece of hitting. Not trying to do too much. Hitting the ball where it's pitched. Taking it right back up the middle. And uh, LSU jumps on top 1-0 in the fifth. Here's Michael Braswell the third. And a nice looking Curve right there. In for strike number one from Vosburg. Just goes to show you, Chase, how baseball is such a game of inches. Like we said, if that shift isn't on, it's a double play. That runner is erased. Um, now uh, he uh, stays at second base, moves over to second base, and then scores on the uh, single by Bingham. Braswell, a South Carolina transfer. Batting ninth for LSU. And one of the coveted players out of the portal that Jay Johnson was able to go and get a plug and play at shortstop. You know, the, the portal um, is, I guess, kind of the, uh, the, the, you either love it or you hate it, I guess. If you're, if you're a coach, uh, you love it. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, you have guys playing at three and four in school, different schools and, and whatnot. So um, Portal has definitely changed uh, college sports uh, to be determined, I guess, if it's uh, for the better or not. Definitely so. And I think there's um, definitely a gray area with that is I'd say overall it's a good thing um, for players to develop and maybe just get a new environment, new coaches to thrive under. But – one could argue that it is definitely overused to a point as well. And then, of course, NIL, um, you know, has a, is a big factor of that as well. But I'll tell you, what, I think Jay Johnson is loving the portal, if I had to guess, no, especially absolutely. at LSU after getting that national title. And uh, just such a story program. And really, why wouldn't you want to play uh, for the Tigers? Not at all. Not, uh, not uh, a reason why you wouldn't there. Runner was going on the previous pitch. As uh, so Johnson has those wheels turning a little bit now, trying to make something happen uh, as Braswell is retired for the second out. And a deep fly ball just got under that one was Braswell as that one carried a bit near the warning track. And Jude Hall was able to chase it down in center field. Not a terribly windy night uh, at the ballpark tonight. And so uh, you're going to have to hit one well to get it out. Um, I do believe, and especially with the way that these pitchers are pitching tonight. Top of the lineup, third time around coming up for LSU. Paxton Kling, the leadoff center fielder. And Vosberg checks the runner at first. one nothing LSU finally broke our scoreless stalemate a few moments ago. And it was Mac Bingham with an RBI single, but Southeastern trying to 
put a Band-Aid, if you will, on this minor wound and get their bats up and rolling in the bottom of the fifth if they could get out of this. Yeah, if you can keep this to one run here, uh, you've got uh, the middle of your order, um, six, seven, well, six, seven, and eight coming up here. So you can keep this to one run. Uh, you're definitely right where you want to be because uh, you've pitched great as the runner goes. And that was close, and he is out. Wow, what a throw from Balin Sorensen in the tag by Salvaggio. LSU caught on the base pass, but they do strike first. one nothing Tigers. And I believe the players are going to stay on the field. They may review this one. I would tell you, watching that one live, uh, that looked to me like he he was out. Um, and, and watching good, strong throw uh, from Sorensen. Got a pitch that he can handle. Made a good, strong throw. Kind of one-hopped a little bit. Uh, but I think this call is going to sting. Um, but, uh, hey, we've been wrong before. Uh, but I think uh, this one is going to sting. We shall see another bang-bang play. And that was Bingham just trying to slide in there at second. Strong throw from Sorensen. Was a bit off to the left side of the bag, but nice dig over there at short and all in one motion. I don't know. I think he may have got underneath that one. That's Yeah, that is tough. The, of course, then the question becomes, do you see enough there to overturn it uh, if you're the umpire? Uh, but you, you hit the nail on the head a moment ago. A bang, bang play. And uh, my goodness, that is... Uh, that's a hard job as you see a good shot there of coach Bobby Barbier uh, just picked up his 200th win overall um, and he said you know you know we, we talked to him he said look the hardest thing about about coming to Hammond uh, was leaving the people behind up in Natchitoches but he said the easiest thing uh, is the people here in Hammond everyone has welcomed him and uh, and and look you see it here tonight there's a great atmosphere uh, in the uh, in the ballpark, uh, just an incredible atmosphere here. Um, you know, when you talk about, you said it earlier, why would you not want to play for LSU? Why would you not want to play for Southeastern as well? As on the other side, there's, a, there's another coach who knows a lot about winning, uh, won a national championship in his second season um, at LSU, 422 wins overall as a head coach. I don't care if you're playing the little sisters of the poor, you win 422 games, you know what you're doing. No, oh, absolutely. And just talking to him during the week, you could tell why his players love playing for him. Just so sharp and interesting to speak the game of baseball with. That's going to be tough. You know, usually kind of the um, – yeah, and that call is going to stand. Usually if the ball beats the runner, uh, they're going to call him out, and that's what happened there. Jay Johnson, obviously not agreeing with the call. Out of the water. Um, you know, when you can pitch, um, and speaking of pitching, Anderson starts off with another uh, strike one there. But when you can pitch, um, you're going to be in any ball game that you play. And uh, Southeastern can definitely um, pitch well and, and going to have a lot of success on the mound. And Anderson is having some of his own success on the mound. And I'm almost losing track, but I believe it is 10 strikeouts for the true freshman. And Balin Sorensen trying to get Southeastern's second hit of the game. They were able to break up the no-no last inning, but right picking up right where he left off. 11 Ks now for Anderson. Got my tally marks going on uh, my scorecard here. Uh, yeah, and kind of, not really what we expected, you know. Um, LSU, the one run on three hits. Uh, Southeastern, just the two hits uh, up to this point. Um, it's been uh, all Anderson, really. He's been the man of the hour so far. He certainly has. Just his third career start was 2-0 and in his first two collegiate outings. 13 strikeouts in nine innings. Well, he's got 11, and we just started the fifth. So what, he's pitched four and one-third and has 11 strikeouts. Not too shabby, I'd say. Well, and that's going to be the question is how far is Coach Johnson going to let him go through those two starts, only nine innings total. So 
we said, though, this is the, the point in the season where you're going to want to uh, to stretch him out. So, uh, Coach Johnson, that's definitely in the back of his mind uh, as we play here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, that one misses high, so three and one is the count. The Parker Coley, the seven hole for SLU. 3-1 here, he's got a hitter's count. Looking, uh, you know, we'll see where Anderson elects to go. That breaking ball has been uh, money for him, and uh, he went with the heat to uh, make the count a full count. Man, that was a big swing by Coley, just missing that one. Full count with one out. And that is a good eye from Coley, so a base on balls for Southeastern with one out. Can the Lions make some madness happen on the base pass? Second walk that uh, Anderson has issued. Uh, looking at Coley on the base pass, um, he is two of two in the uh, stolen base category up to this point. So uh, again, a lot of things you can do. Uh, hit and run, uh, straight steal here. Um, I just think you've got to get something going uh, some action on the base pass because you haven't had a whole lot of opportunities. You've got to make something happen to get Anderson out of his rhythm. I would agree with that. And TJ Salvaggio took one for a ride. So deep right center first time around. So if you go based on that, if you could keep it maybe more hard on the ground and to the right side, would work out for Southeastern. He had three RBIs just last night against Alcorn State. So definitely he's got a bit of a hot bat in his hand. Absolutely. This is a big uh, juncture of the season for Southeastern. Now, that Alcorn State game last night, the first of 10 straight at home for the Lions. So, uh, an opportunity for them to really uh, make some hay here leading into and uh, beginning Southland Conference play. And Salvaggio wishes he could have that one back. Just fell for the eye candy as a hitter, that high heater at the eyes. Don't know what it is about it, but you just want to swing 0-2. But he will stay alive as he fouls this one back. And Anderson went right back to that high candy, like you said. Uh, he's had his way. Um, he's had his way, and that is, is something that Coach Barbier said, hey, we've got to get him out of his character. We've got to make him do something different than he wants to do to get us out. Um, Southeastern, by and large, has not been able to do that up to this point. Here's the 0-2. Anderson deals, and that will be, or excuse me, that was actually, or Salvaggio kind of confused yeah, me on that. that I thought was, it was strike yeah, three. It was strike three. And it is strike three. Got, got pump fake there by well, Southeastern shortstop, but strike three, and now that is number 12 on the evening for Cade Anderson. Two outs, man on first. And this young freshman has just put on an absolute show here tonight. He absolutely has. And, uh, and hey, like we said, he's a, a local guy. I'm sure he's got um, a lot of uh, fans in the stands tonight uh, as uh, he, you know, grew up uh, in Madisonville, went to St. Paul High School, uh, another outstanding program uh, over there as uh, just that really that whole I-12 corridor uh, from Baton Rouge uh, on over through uh, to Slidell. Uh, just a lot of outstanding high school baseball. Right on and right in the backyard of both of these clubs in Hammond and Baton Rouge. And now here's Anderson. That one will be fouled off. So one and one the count. And that's another thing that Coach Johnson said, you know, about coming here to play Southeastern. He said, number one, it's close. We like that. Two, it helps our RPI. He said at Southeastern, he, he, he says, He's got a lot of respect for Southeastern. Um, of course, uh, back in 2021, when uh, everyone was coming out of COVID and people were scared to travel and, and you didn't know what the world was, was, what direction things were heading in, he said he called Southeastern to come play out there and J.R. Teague said, absolutely, we'll be there. Um, and came out and he said, There's a, he said, great deal of respect for the program, for the university. Um, and so, I, you know, look, this is going to be an every year thing, I think. I think as long as Coach Jay Johnson is there, LSU is going to come over and play Southeastern at least once. And it's good for uh, Hammond America to, to have um, LSU in, and especially when they're the defending national champions. Certainly so. And we have a sellout here for the second year running as LSU did run rule Southeastern 10-0 last year in seven innings. But that was their national championship team. 
Not to say that this Tiger team couldn't repeat the feat number two in the nation and have just restocked on talent, but a much more competitive ball game here tonight. Bottom of the fifth, only one run between the two teams, and that was an RBI single by Mac Bingham for LSU. Back in the fourth inning. Two and two the count, Anderson sitting on 12 Ks. Can he make it 13 to conclude the fifth? Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And just got away from him a bit. Three and two is gonna be the count, and he's trying to live on that outside corner again, though. And Southeastern will have a man in motion here. You would think full count, two outs, a ball in the gap. Could tie this thing up. Here's the full count. It's fouled straight up and back. And we'll do things over in just a few moments. I tell you, Anderson has been impressive tonight, uh, but Southeastern has pitched well um, as well. They, they've been impressive. Strike three, Cade Anderson, 13 strikeouts through five innings of work. The freshman is just dominating here in Hammond. We'll be back. Through five, it is one zero. It brings, of course, I'm a little bit older. It brings to my mind, uh, back in 1993, um, another freshman, Brett Laxton, uh, in the national championship game against Wichita State, 16 strikeouts there. Anderson, uh, well on his way. He's almost there. He's got 13 through five. And interesting to see, only his third collegiate outing. Uh, we've mentioned multiple times. He is just a true freshman doing this against Southeastern, quite remarkable, but hopefully Jay Johnson leaves him in, at least for the viewers <laughs> in ourselves, <laughs> as we're really witnessing a spectacle here. But out number one, Southeastern keeps hanging around. I mean, this lineup for LSU, we know it's potent, but only one run, and Valsberg, I believe this is his third inning, or fourth inning of work yeah. now. And he's really done a, quite a good job, only surrendered one run. And, and we talked about the positioning earlier at Burn Southeastern right there. Kling hits that one right to him. Uh, he's 0 for 3 on the night. He's popped out, he struck out, and grounded out as LSU only three hits themselves on the night so far. And the two-hole Josh Pearson is up to the plate. Tommy White on deck, so we know things can change in a hurry with this Tiger lineup. Yeah, just there's there's no easy at bats. There's no uh, there's nobody you can pitch around, and uh, you know you, we showed the uh, SEC standings earlier, um, and LSU is going to be right in the thick of that. Uh, we were kind of talking, you know, before uh, the game started. Uh, those rankings are kind of fluid because you play so many games uh, in uh, the college baseball season that uh, you know you're going to kind of rise and fall throughout the course of a season. Which is why it's so important um, that you're focusing on the day-to-day, -day, what you can do every day to get better because as Coach Johnson told us, that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna win out. And, and if you do that, the wins and losses will take care of themselves. Exactly, and that's kind of similar really to what Coach Barbier was saying. As he loves the hot start beating Cal State Fullerton in East Carolina on the road, but he says even if the record was flipped four and nine, he still just wants to see the consistency on a daily basis. And I mean, he's certainly got to be pleased with what he's seen out here tonight, only trailing by one run to the number two team in the nation and defending national champions. And only had to use two arms so far, and Aiden Vosberg has been carrying the brunt of the pitches now in his fourth inning of work. Does have a runner on here. And Tommy White is at the plate, but wow, gets ahead in the count, and that's exactly what you want to do if you're SLU. And only had to use three last night. So, uh, you know, looking ahead to the uh, to the weekend, this is going to be a, uh, a fairly well-rested staff. Um, and we've talked about how successful the weekend rotation has been up to this point. Um, but this is going to be a big pitch in this ball game here. Can you get White out? Um, and uh, keep that runner first for two outs. And I'll tell you what, I think Vosberg, I don't know if you want to waste a pitch here. Oh, and two, well, he says, no, thank you. He's yeah. going for the strikeout, but quite a little bit undisciplined, I'd say, on those first two, especially on the second pitch. That was well outside, swing and misses. Just looks a little bit off. Did have a single earlier in this one. 
one for two on the night. And here is the 0-2, and now it'll be 1-2. That one misses low and I think a bit outside. Yeah, a little bit of a waste pitch there uh, by Vosberg on that one. And that, if you're going to miss, that's where you want to miss. Low and away, don't let Tommy White hurt you. Here's the 1-2. And White gets under this one, but out of play. And he continues to foul off these pitches. And Vosberg's pitch count is only going up. He's been economical um, in his pitches. Um, you would have to think this might be uh, his last inning. Maybe one more, depending on uh, how quickly he's able to get through uh, the inning. Nice play. And a double play to end the inning. Shay Thomas on the hot corner. Vosberg loves it. In the and what a double play then. And, and, and both sides of that, Shea Thomas, a transfer from Edmonds College, a fifth-year player as well. So uh, veteran guys and, and making an outstanding play. And that was a rope that Tommy Tanks hit. And now Southeastern with the leadoff single and misplayed in right field. Legging for second. And now third down and the throws over. White's head in Southeastern. What is going on this last sequence between the double play and now a triple to lead things off from Jude Hall as Alumni Field is on its feet. I think they'll probably end up scoring that a single, uh, maybe two errors on the play there. Just a frozen rope and uh, just skip past him a little bit there. It rained the last couple of days in Hammond. Um, don't know if maybe it's a little bit wet down there, um, but now Southeastern has something going. And if you're Anderson, this is the first time you've really been in trouble tonight uh, here in the sixth inning. They're going to go out. They're going to talk to him, going to settle uh, the freshman down. Uh, but Southeastern has something cooking. That they do. Style for the junior. Can't officially close the book on uh, on Anderson just yet, but by my unofficial count, six plus, like we said, he is still responsible for uh, the runner at third base. Uh, three hits, 13 strikeouts, and two walks. Got a funny feeling, too, as you see uh, the uh, runner Hall uh, sliding into third base. Got a funny feeling he might uh, have a uh, pitcher of the week honor coming uh, in the near future. Certainly so, and you would think he's only going to pitch more and more as the season progresses, and he's the midweek guy right now, but the way he's pitching, I wonder if Johnson will take a look at him for the weekend, and if not starting, maybe coming in um, in relief to put in some work, but certainly, I mean, the Tigers have found a, a special young talent. Look at that crowd. You, you mentioned it, it's a sellout crowd here. Uh, great atmosphere. Uh, here in the ballpark and just uh, look that looks good to see you know every time you come to Southeastern uh, those facilities look so great with people in them um, and when they're full you know I had a chance to be here last week for the uh, the, the high school uh, state championship girls basketball tournament this place looks great with people in it um, and they're seeing a great one here tonight. Hammond Louisiana like to refer to themselves as ham in America. And it really is a diamond in the rough down here in South Louisiana. Great town with equally great people and got a heck of a baseball program as well. Obviously a down year a year ago, but new coach and so far so good. Nine and four, two marquee wins over Cal State Fullerton in East Carolina in Greenville at the weekend. And now they've got the defending national champions. I wouldn't say on the ropes, but definitely have got them a little uncomfortable, only up 1-0 or LSU and the tying run just 90 feet away with zero outs. You gotta put the ball in play here. And this one is rolled over, but it will bring the tying run home and Braswell makes the out. But job well done from Ryan Brome. Or excuse me, that was Justin Williams. Ryan Brome is now up to bat, but Justin Williams picks up the RBI, and that's good as gold for the green and gold. One to one now, our score. Bottom of the six, and you can see now these Southeastern players are starting to believe. Williams, sixth RBI on the year, and nothing fancy there. 
like I said before the pitch, you've got to put the ball in play, make uh, that LSU defense make a play. That's just what they did. And now we've got a whole new ball game here in the sixth inning. Here's Uloa. And misses there. 2-0 and the count to Ryan Brome. And this is the heart of Southeastern's order. Brome the three hole. And then you got Shea Thomas right after him. And ironically enough, the two guys who were in the center of that double play to end the top of the six. And now it's really like since then, that was the spark Southeastern needed. Jude Hall with a leadoff single, booted in the outfield, gets all the way the third and then hit home. And now, I mean, it's a 0-0 ball game, as coaches would say, one to one now as that run was wiped off from LSU. But how many times do you see that? A guy makes a great defensive play um, in one half of the inning, leads off or bats in the next uh, half inning does it with the bat as well. They always have to be on your toes and ready to make a play. And Uloa fans Ryan Brome for a big out number two. And up to the plate is cleanup batter Shea Thomas for Southeastern. So we take one more look at this. Nothing fancy there, just some high heat that uh, Brome could not catch up to. 14 Strikeouts on the night for LSU pitching. And if you're Southeastern, you say, man, we finally get Anderson out of there, and here comes Uloa throwing the heat as well. Uloa misses with the off-speed offering. 1-0 the count to Thomas. And he is the leading batter, if you look at average this year, is the graduate third baseman. Made a nice play in the field, as we mentioned, and now he watches this one to even the count at one. Again, looked like that was maybe um, a little bit low, but uh, the home plate umpire has been giving that all uh, night. And so uh, consistency is definitely what you want from uh, your umpire. And Thomas just swings right through that one. One and two now the count as Uloa gets the heater by Thomas. And Uloa a bit more of a subtle, more uh, slow-paced approach, I would say, than Anderson. And what a web gem here is the leather is flashing on the diamond and Hammond. And was that Bear Jones? That it was. was at first base, the big fella showing off the glove. And I'm going to tell you, we are seeing a clinic tonight, Chase, on how to play first base. These two guys can't pick it. You can't pick it any better than these two guys have done here uh, tonight. And uh, stoppage here, not quite sure. Uh, as Neil has a uh, problem with uh, his equipment, it looks like. Uh, not quite sure what is going on here. Not entirely sure either. Neil did have our first hit of the ball game for either side with a double. I believe that was back in the second inning to lead things off back in the top of the second. But if you're just now joining us, one to one here in an absolute pitcher's duel. And Vosberg took over for Aspalm for Southeastern in the third. Those two have combined to only allow one run. Cade Anderson, the freshman for LSU, 13 strikeouts. Did get pulled by Jay Johnson in the last inning, but magical performance indeed from the freshman. But Southeastern hanging in there. They tied it up in the bottom of the sixth. And with three innings to play, they are on a level playing field with the defending national champions. And the thing about Anderson that, that you hate if you're an LSU fan, um, that run did score he was responsible for, so he's not going to get the win. Uh, but important thing for him and his confidence, he's not going to get a loss in this one. Uh, because uh, when you pitch as well as he has pitched, uh, you definitely want to uh, avoid that L next to your name. Certainly so. I mean, the way he has pitched definitely deserves a win, but take nothing away from Southeastern and specifically Aiden Vosberg. He's been dealing as well, only giving up one run, as we've mentioned. And Southeast, or excuse me, LSU, you know how potent their lineup is, but haven't really barreled up too many balls so far tonight in a strikeout Vosberg fans another one one seven and white is having an evening 
Looked like a backdoor slider there. We'll, we'll look at it again. Uh, but that is his uh, third strikeout uh, of the night. Uh, just an incredible uh, pitch right there. And that's the thing about these midweek games. You know, you, you come in and you say as that one gets away from him and uh, Travinsky is going to wear that one uh, going down to first. But, you know, you come in with a plan. Um, and then all of a sudden you're at a 1-1 game in the sixth inning. So maybe some innings that you thought were not going to be high leverage innings become high leverage innings. And now you've got a guy who going forward can say, hey, I went five innings, six innings against LSU, and I gave up one run. Uh, that's going to bode well for him because I guarantee you nothing, uh, no knock on anybody in the Southern Conference, he's not going to see another lineup even close to this the rest of the season. And the leading batter of this lineup, Steven Milam, up to the plate. And he represents LSU's only run of the game. Batting over 400, already has a base knock tonight. Yeah, single to lead off that fifth inning and uh, came around to uh, score on Bingham's RBI single. And this one is corralled on the warning track out in left field. And Southeastern gets it in for out number two. That was Justin Williams with his back up against the wall making the play. Saw there two on the scoreboard. We hadn't uh, mentioned they'd only scored the one error against LSU, so not two on that. Um, so a run, four hits, and uh, one error for LSU in this one. And Milan gave that one a ride going the opposite way, um, an 87-mile-an-hour pitch there that uh, he nearly took out uh, the opposite field, and that's going to be all uh, for Vosburg. But what an app RBA can go to. Um, when we talked to him earlier this week, he said, look, our three weekend guys are trustworthy. We know what they're going to give us, even when they don't have their best stuff. Um, we know that they're going to, to battle get us through five, six, seven innings, keep our pen fresh, because you get in a midweek game like this, now you've got um, Aspalm who, who went two solid innings, Vosburg four and two thirds, now you bring in Love, so you've got a lot of weapons in this bullpen uh, if you're Bobby Barbier. Definitely so, Southeastern, keep harping on, but I believe picked eighth, as you said, in the preseason rankings. I get it with a new coach and some new faces, but it is young, still in non-conference, but I mean, beating the likes of Cal State Fullerton, number 11 East Carolina on the road, and now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending national champion, LSU Tigers. Certainly appears that Southeastern is in for a fruitful season. We'll see, of course, how it plays out. And Southland Conference play not too far away. Uh, you've got uh, this weekend, of course, a three-game set with uh, North Dakota State, and then they'll hang around and play um, LSU uh, next week in the midweek as this is the final road uh, midweek game for LSU is they're going to be at the box from here on out uh, during the week. So, uh, you know, you're reaching that point. You know, it seems like the season's just started, but conference play starts early and earlier every year, it seems, and especially with the conferences, uh, especially the SEC expanding, that's going to um, push it forward even more. So um, you, you've got to be ready. You know, it's none of this. Uh, you know, there's no, there's not spring training games to get you ready like in Major League Baseball. You've got to be ready to go from the jump. Love fires. Ooh, and that Ooh. looked like a strike. Maybe a bit of an unfavorable call for the closer for SLU. That definitely looked like it caught the plate, but not according to the umpire. It'll be a walk for Bear Jones. So first and second now, two outs and up to the plate, Mac Bingham, a familiar name because he batted in the lone run for LSU so far tonight. Can he pick up his second RBI? We shall see. Then he also, of course, was caught stealing to end that inning. That's the first, that was the first uh, caught stealing, by the way, uh, that the Tigers have suffered uh, up to this point this season. But... Um, or, no, I'm sorry, check that. They uh, are now uh, 16 of 20. Southeastern uh, remains perfect in that, um, in that category. Um, 
big, like we said, high leverage innings, though, right now uh, by Lava, a guy who's been there before. Uh, this is a big, uh, big stage in this ball game right now. And couldn't get a look at who the pinch runner was for LSU, but Hayden Travinsky makes way. It's going to be number 18, Jake Brown. Jake Brown, a little more speed on the base pass than the veteran catcher, Travinsky. One and one the count to Bingham. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And this one is a high roller, but an easy play for Love. And LSU is retired in the top of the seventh. One to one is our score as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch stick, get your popcorn, <laughs> as we've got a good one on our hands. A rain out, I forgot about that in one of their series. I think it was South Carolina, yeah. actually. They split over there in Columbia, one to one, actually against Braswell, who's now on LSU, their shortstop. But uh, wind up kind of cost them. Then I remember a series, I believe they lost two out of three, the Mississippi State and Baton Rouge towards the end of the season. Wind up cost them. But then, of course, going on that legendary national championship run, spearheaded by Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz, Tommy White and company. Kind of interesting, you, you mentioned Paul Skeens. Uh, kind of interesting to me that uh, the Pirates announced this week that he's not going to break camp with the uh, Major League Club. I thought for sure that would be a foregone conclusion with Major League Baseball awarding teams for those high draft picks making the majors quicker. Um, I thought for sure they'd put him in the bullpen, give him some low leverage innings, um, and, and bring him, you know, bring him up uh, out of spring training. Uh, so he's going to see some time in the minors and then, um, you know, will probably move into that rotation, I would say, at some point later on this season. Here's Uloa picking up right where Anthony did another strikeout for the California native. And down goes Jude Hall, I believe that was the leadoff for SLU. Uh, Hayes, sorry. Right, excuse Hayes. me, yeah, another lefty. And and look, I'm looking at my scorecard. Bad night for Hayes. Three strikeouts, every single one of them looking. Yeah, definitely at least want to go down swinging. Just an off night for the five-hole hitter for Southeastern. Northwestern State transfer came over with Bobby Barbier. And now this is the six-hole, Balin Sorensen, the catcher for Southeastern. And it's been that night, he's 0 for 2 with a pair of swinging strikeouts. So, uh, hey, everybody has at least one uh, on their uh, on their docket tonight um, as uh, Anderson just, uh, like we said, blazed his way through uh, this southeastern lineup. Uh, Uloa doing the same. Ooh, and that one almost looked like a strikeout, but the ball did go straight up and out of play. And Sorensen will live to see another pitch. 15 strikeouts on the night for uh, LSU pitching. Uh, but Southeastern, like we said, right there, it's a 1-1 ball game in the bottom of the seventh inning. Uh, just takes that one hit, just takes that one uh, misplay in the field uh, to turn a single into a runner standing on third, and uh, anything can happen. And just the way this game has played out, really kind of get that feeling whoever gets the next run will not be guaranteed the win, but obviously will like their chances late in this ball game. Just feels like a kind of two to one game. Whoever can get that second run will probably go on the win, but man, it's been hard to come by. Another strikeout from Uloa, and that's a, that's a telling story right here. Your five and six hitters for Southeastern, 0 for six, six strikeouts on the night. LSU pitching, Kate Anderson obviously doing the bulk, and now Uloa really performing superbly out on the bump for the Bayou Bengals. And isn't that just a fun name to say? Fidel Uloa. Definitely is, rolls off the tongue, and he does, does. He does miss low right there, 2-0 the count. And this is Parker Coley, the seven-hole right fielder for SLU. Strikeout and a walk uh, so far uh, for Coley as uh, looking to uh, to get his night started. And couldn't have asked for a better count, 3-0. and And you got to think 
I know it's a tie game, but base runners definitely are crucial. Wonder if the take sign will be on from Coach Barbier or if he'll let him swing away at 3-0. Could get a good pitch. I think he's going to be taken here, try to get in that hitter's count. And that one will be on the corner for strike one. Three and one now to Coley. Yeah, that one right down General Pershing uh, drive here in Hammond, America. Now he's in a hitter's count. Look, uh, look for him to get something to handle here. And he does a dribbler up the middle, and it makes it through the infield. So a two-out single for Parker Coley, and that'll bring up T.J. Salvaggio. Can the Lions strike in the bottom of the seventh? Nice job again. Uh, didn't hit that one hard. Didn't try to do too much with it. Hit it where it was pitched. Uh, brought it right back through the box. And uh, you see the swing here, just a good compact swing uh, and right through the middle. And now uh, Salvaggio's got a chance to do something here uh, with a two-out base run. And Salvaggio gave one a ride, I believe, back in the third inning off of Anderson to deep right center. So, And he had three RBIs just last night against Alcorn State. Certainly a capable batter now in his third year for the Lions out of North Shore High in Slidell, Louisiana, as you mentioned, that North Shore area just, I mean, which is really in Southeastern's backyard. LSU, too, to a point, but so much talent in this area. That that 6-5-A district, of course, that district getting split next year. Uh, but you think back to guys like Ryan Eads that ended up at LSU uh, coming out of that uh, district. Uh, Chad, God, there's a drive. It's deep. Left center field, and it bounces off the wall. That should bring home a run. Salvaggio giving the Lions the lead in the bottom of the seventh. In alumni field, the SLU faithful on its feet. Salvaggio a stand-up two-out double, and the Lions take the lead. You know, baseball is a game of inches as look at this, uh, good extension there. And uh, that one, hey, a windy night, that might get out of here. Um, good effort out there by Bingham. And uh, look, that just goes to show you a good at bat. Uh, you always have to be ready, you always have to battle. You have two outs in the inning, you haven't looked good. Coley gets a little dribbler up the middle, and then Salvaggio drives one to left, nearly gets it out of here. Uh, Coley comes all the way around, scores to put the Lions ahead 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the seven. And out comes, like you said, fired up. Uloa remains in the ball game. This is Jeremy Raider, the nine-hole designated hitter, up to bat for Southeastern. And he aggressively swings through that one, but wound up bouncing on the turf as the bottom fell out of that curveball. And it's set up, you know, like you said, there's still a lot of baseball left to play here, Chase, but it's set up very nicely. Southeastern has their closer in, um, and you've got some fresh arms in that bullpen that you didn't have to use last night um, to get that win against Alcorn. And that's what Coach Barbier told us during the week. He said, look, sometimes it is just about whose bullpen is more well-rested. Sometimes this pitcher or this hitter will have uh, an advantage where he might uh, own one a, a certain hitter or a certain pitcher. Um, and Southeastern enjoying uh, the uh, edge here tonight. And this one grounded the short. Braswell makes the play at first, but Southeastern strikes to take its first lead of the ball game. Number two LSU trails to the one in Hammond, Louisiana. Wolf schemes and a Dylan Cruz. And he told us, he said, look, Dylan Cruz, is worth four runs a game just by himself. Um, so a lot of talent uh, that uh, was lost from last year's team, but a lot of talent still uh, over in Baton Rouge. And here's some of that talent out of the portal. South Carolina shortstop transfer Michael Braswell III up to bat for LSU batting in the ninth spot. And Paxton Kling on deck the beginning of the order. Ooh, and that is not what you want to do if you're love, you see. Kind of set something in his glove. You could imagine what that was, but frustration for sure. And hits the leadoff batter LSU exactly what you want if you're the Tigers. Yeah, absolutely. That one just got away from him. No, no intent there. You definitely don't want to put the leadoff man uh, on uh, on base there. Um, 
And yeah, that's one you just, hey, you stand in, you wear it, it's not gonna hurt that much, it's not a cold night. Um, and now you're at first uh, representing the tie and run. And Paxton Kling is the leadoff for the Bayou Bengals. 0 for 3 tonight, but a hit here would do his team a lot of good with a one-run deficit. And he fouls the first one up. Yeah, got to get something going here uh, if you're Kling. Um, the, uh, the top two uh, in the order, Kling and Pearson, 0 for 5 with two strikeouts and a walk uh, so far tonight. So um, have not done a great job setting the table thus far for the Tigers. Quickly, 0-2 the Kling, and Love has bounced back nicely in two pitches here. The Kling peppering the strike zone. And this will be one of the bigger pitches of the ball game coming up. Absolutely. Um, obviously, uh, you want to, uh, you know, you want to get this out here. You'd love a double play ball. Let's see what Love goes to. Here's the 0-2 and a beautiful breaking ball. Strike three in Paxton Kling. Walks back to the LSU dugout in a big first out for Southeastern. Huge pitch there uh, from Love. Like you said, took a little bit off of it with the breaking ball. And Kling, you see, just out in front. Uh, he was a little off balance there as well um, as he swung. And that's big because now uh, you keep that double play in order. Uh, if you can get one here, uh, you're out of the inning. You'd rather have Tommy Tanks batting is a good pitch there. You'd love to have Tommy Tanks batting to lead off the inning instead of with men in scoring position. Absolutely, and now Josh Pearson up to the plate again. That big sweeper finds the zone for Love, and now he keeps the runner honest over there at first is Braswell. And the shortstop from South Carolina does have some speed on the base passes, I believe. My partner here is gonna yeah, one of one um, on the stolen base category this year. So capable of running is Braswell. Wouldn't imagine you would send him in this situation, trailing by a run of one out, and you got your number two hole hitter at the plate, but you never know. Well, and then you've got White and Neal uh, waiting in the wings here. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a situation where you let your hitters uh, do the job here. And this one is roped, but luckily for Love and SLU, well out of play, just out in front of that one was Pearson. But, man, that was one of the hardest hit balls of the night. Certainly, I think so for LSU. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he squared that one up nicely, uh, just out in front a little bit. Another big pitch here. Is he going to go back to that breaking ball? And he does in the same result. Sit him down, Lance Love. Southeastern with two quick outs on strikeouts and their closer is doing a heck of a job but perhaps the hardest batter to face in this lineup but really in all the country Tommy White is a bit quiet he does have a single tonight but you see that beautiful sweeper again yeah White one for three uh, you mentioned the single uh, was a victim as there's another one uh, through the right side uh, he was the victim of that incredible 5-3 double play that Thomas and Brome turned. Um, but you'll take that uh, if, you're, if you're Southeastern right now. Uh, like I said, you don't want White coming to the plate with men in scoring position. Nice piece of hitting right there, uh, being aggressive, going after the first pitch, just drives it to right field, pass the baton to the next man in line, let him do his job. And I'll tell you what, that's a very mature piece of hitting by Tommy Absolutely. White going with the pitch. We know all the raw power he has can hit it out of the ballpark at any given pitch, but going with the pitch, being content with getting a single, and like you said, passing the baton to the next man. A heck of a job right there by Tommy Tanks. Braswell uh, lifted for a pinch runner here, did not uh, get the number there, and of course, uh, gonna be 39, gonna be uh, Zeb Rudell. Uh, his eighth uh, game of the year has four bats on the season. And he represents the tying run. And Love not yet on the rubber. It seems like Sorensen. And now, yes, yeah, Sorensen is going to come out and talk to Love. Wonder if there will be maybe a pitching change. Yeah, it, Coach, yeah, Coach just uh, made the motion uh, right as he got into French. Um, so far, 3.67 earned run average through uh, nine ball games. You're going to win a lot of ball games uh, at the collegiate level when you can pitch like that. 
Absolutely, and throw strikes. Rodriguez has been superb this year. As you see, his ERA under one. Closed out the East Carolina game a few nights ago over there in Greenville when Southeastern upset number 11 ECU, trying to do the same to number two LSU with a one-run lead, top of the eighth. Runners are on for the Tigers, two outs. And a great first pitch right there from Rodriguez. Paints the black on that fastball. Coach Barbier playing that lefty-lefty matchup here. Uh, going with Rodriguez against uh, Neal. As here's a shot right to the second baseman. Great play. And Hayes makes the play. Southeastern survives. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. SLU upset. Uh, Hall, uh, Williams, and Brome, top of the order, do up. So uh, playing the matchups here, uh, Coach Johnson, um, as well as Coach Barbier last inning going to, Rod, uh, to Rodriguez. So you're playing that lefty-lefty matchup. Or a Lakeville, Minnesota native, Xavier, Ohio transfer. And LSU actually, believe, plays them. Is it this weekend, Xavier, Ohio, or maybe the following? I know uh, they have yeah, them on the is. schedule coming to the box. It is this weekend. And, so, um, and also a new second baseman, uh, Kucherek, in for um, – or no, I'm sorry, check that, a new shortstop in as the, they pinch ran for Braswell in uh, the seventh inning. I'm sorry, in the top of the eighth, excuse me. And lower misses with the first two, so 2-0 two and oh the count. And squaring around the bunt, but pulling it back 3-0 and oh now lower in danger of walking his first batter faced on just what would be four pitches if this one fails to find the zone. Here's the 3-0, and it does loaf. Ball four, and Jude Hall with a leadoff walk. Southeastern can smell an insurance run. Man, that's big. You know, we were talking uh, between innings, and you said an insurance run would be huge for the Lions, and that's how you start to get one. You walk that leadoff, man. Now there's so many things that, uh, that you can do if you're uh, Southeastern and Coach Bobby Barbier here. Do you bunt? Do you hit and run? Uh, you, you know, you don't have the benefit of Anderson being around the zone uh, but you've got to get that runner into scoring position, and rightfully so, Lohr going to throw over. You've got to get that runner into scoring position with less than one out, or with one out, sorry. And Justin Williams up to the plate, the left fielder batting second for Southeastern, and we said the heart of both orders coming up. Well, here it is for SLU, their number two batter at the plate in a pickoff. And... Was there a time Ooh. called? If Balk, I think, Balk. was called, because I was wondering why Hall pulled up. I thought he was just giving wow. himself up, but yeah, Balk is called, and that is huge for both sides. But Southeastern now a man in scoring position with zero outs in search of an insurance run, and man, what a mishap right there from Lower. Let's see if we can pick, yep, he, yep. Well, let's see. He picked up and then not entirely sure, and to be honest with you, how many balk calls do you see in the course of a season? Not too many, <laughs> you know, as it caught me off guard as well. Um, you know, I guess they thought he was coming too much towards the plate as he made his move. Let's see again. Maybe, maybe he picked that leg up, that front leg up a couple of times. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, it looked like the first, first base umpire called it. So he had to see something there uh, with a little bit better angle than what we have. Uh, but a, a, you're absolutely right, a huge turn of events uh, because now you can bump that runner over to third. Uh, now the infield coming in, uh, sensing that, um, and actually Coach Johnson going to come out um, as well so we could have another pitching change here. Um, so much, though, that Southeastern can uh, hit her in the box here. Uh, this is number three, uh, Dane Watts, a uh, St. Thomas Aquinas product uh, from right here in Hammond, and he gets a good bunt down. That is how you draw it up right there. The uh, former St. Thomas Aquinas Falcon doing it the right way and moves that runner over to third with the big insurance run. And I'll tell you what, I, I know that JRTs will be smiling 
as both his sons played at St. Thomas Aquinas. And you mentioned like to bunt and move runners around. I mean, that is a textbook job right there by Watts. Called a lot of Dane Watts football games over the years uh, as well. Good to see him. Uh, but just good, smart, heady play right there. Um, and now, let's see, they're going to give the intentional walk to Brome. Uh, you want to set up the double play right there. And so you want to get out of uh, the inning uh, if you can. Um, but again, putting that runner on is always a uh, scary proposition here. And definitely when you got Shea Thomas, SLU's cleanup batter is now going to step up to the plate and entering tonight leads them in batting average. Well, regardless of the outcome. Absolutely. I mean, we keep mentioning, but Cal State Fullerton, East Carolina with those two wins just this past weekend, got to think that had or bode, bodes well for Southeastern going forward. But in this game as well, knowing that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reigning national champions. I mean, just last season, I know, you know, you flip the page, e each season is, has its own nuances, but uh, this – a lot of the same guys still in Southeast. I mean, you got some new faces, and here's a single, and the insurance run is on the board. Absolutely huge for SLU, and they take a 3-1 to lead over LSU. Thomas, a nice piece of hitting right there, and uh, just drove that one through the infield, and a huge third run for Southeastern. And look, baseball's a game of inches. Right there, does nothing fancy with that, and just out of the reach of the shortstop. Uh, Kucherek, the run scores. Um, it's about having quiet. Look at that dugout. They are, they are fired up. They are feeling it right now. It's about having quality at bats. Um, if you can battle, if you can make the big two out or two strike um, hit, um, things take care of themselves, and Southeastern has done an outstanding job of that in this ball game this evening. And now here's Jake Hayes. It's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, but um, the runner was able, Thomas, to get to second, a pinch runner now, but in scoring position, and a base knock would certainly erase the memory of an 0 for 3 night so far. Excuse me, runners on first and second, yes, because there's men on the corners with that intentional walk. So, Southeastern only one out. LSU has to be careful here. Still damage to be done if you're the Lions. And this one is roped to left field, and it'll get down, a double. One run will score. And now caught and tagged out at second. I believe that well, that was the pinch runner for Shea Thomas. And that is two outs now. And man, actually, I don't, from our vantage point, I don't know if the, I don't think the run did score yeah, because did he not. was, yeah, he he thought he would maybe tag up. Really unfortunate yeah, for Southeast. Some, some confusion on the base pass there. Uh, they're going to get together here. Great piece of hitting, though. Um, and, yeah, the runner there kind of in no man's land. Uh, so now two outs. Let's reset it. Two outs. Runners at the corners. And let's see. That's going to be Sorensen uh, coming up here. And, man, really unfortunate. LSU kind of caught a bit of a break there as um, the runner on second. I mean, that's tough to judge you. I really thought it was probably going to be caught. It was well hit off the bat, but. Um, unable to get to it was Pearson in right field. And then usually, I mean, you think if you're on second, you easily score on a ball to the wall. But I'll try, didn't want to get doubled up and was not able to get a good enough read to round third and trot home. So three to one still. The deficit remains two for LSU. Runners on the corners, though, with two outs. And here's Sorensen, as you mentioned. Gidry misses uh, down and uh, away there. Uh, Sorensen, three strikeouts on the night as well. Uh, Hayes broke uh, his string there, so Sorensen trying to do the same. Big cut. It was a big cut, and he pops it up to even the count at one. Gavin Gidry on the bump. And the Lions, the upset-minded 
Lions with a three to one lead. Fresh off beating East Carolina, who was ranked trying to take down another ranked opponent. And this is one of the big boys, LSU, a story program. Probably the hottest name in college baseball right now, and rightfully so, coming off a national championship. And Jay Johnson's now his third year at the helm, but what a win this would be. Still far from over there. Bottom of the eight, two-run lead. Can they add to it? Here's the one-two from Gidry. Swing and a miss. And Gavin Gidry Good says, go back to the dugout for Southeastern, but they still get a much-needed insurance run that or excuse me, the Tigers. And you take a look at the rest of those standings. Nichols, the reigning champs from a year ago, but don't sleep on the Southland Conference and one of their best programs in really the past decade or more, Southeastern, giving LSU all they can handle here on this Wednesday night. Like you said, Chase, a lot of uh, baseball left here. Southeastern still has to get three outs, but like we said, you're probably only going to get one bid. Most years, you're only going to get one bid. If you don't win that conference tournament, every win like this that you can pick up is huge to help that RPI because you know LSU is going to pick up their share of wins too. Oh, absolutely. And LSU, as we mentioned earlier, Arkansas, Florida actually won the share of the SEC title. The Tigers fell short by half a game, then went on to win the national title, which trumps all, but... I'm sure Coach Jay Johnson wants a taste of his first, what would be his first SEC title. And out number one is made at third base. And believe that is, it's not Shea Thomas. It was who subbed in for him on the base pass. And that is Jeremy Raider, I think, yeah. that got moved, who was the DH at the beginning of the game. But out number one. And Southeastern can smell it now, just two outs away from a monumental win. That's going to bring Milam to the plate, and, and Milam uh, one hit uh, and a run on the night, so it's not going to be easy uh, sledding here. And just as you say that, a single is down. Milam rounds first, and he'll stay put at first, but a beautiful piece of hitting, and he shakes his head. Yeah, this thing isn't over yet. One out, man on first, tying run to the plate. And guess who it is? Big Bear Jones for the Tigers. Can't see the number, I believe that's Dane Watts who uh, checked in uh, for Williams out there in left field. Big play to get over, cut that off, hold Milam to first uh, because you still have the double play ball set up here. And this one is a flare out to right field and it is caught one out away or Southeastern from knocking off LSU, Bear Jones flies out the right field, and it'll bring up Mac Bingham, who represents the tying run and the only RBI he brought home earlier in this game. I've got a note, but I'm not gonna jinx this. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> wait, and I'm gonna save it. <laughs> Let's see this one play out. And the curveball off the mark for SLU, but one out away. Jackson Rodriguez going for yet another save on this young season. He shut the door on ECU. Can he do it to LSU? And this one fouled off one and one. Alumni field on its feet. Bingham just missed that one. That insurance run is huge at this point because all Bingham can do right now is tie it. Here's the pitch, and that catches the outside corner. One strike away are the Lions. Big pitch. The crowd is going wild here, anticipating this. Here's the one-two from Rodriguez. And it's high, missing. Ball two. The count even at two. They give Milam second base on that. He's running catcher indifference there. That run means nothing um, at this point. Exactly, Chris, meaningless run, but the tying run is at the plate. Here we go, and that misses up and away, so a full count here. Mac Bingham at the plate trying to keep number two LSU alive here in this all-Louisiana battle in Hammond, America. Here's the full count, Rodriguez 
and he misses high at the eyes. And what an at-bat from Mac Bingham. One and two, watches three straight balls. Yeah, great at-bat there. Uh, he's had a good night. One for three uh, with the RBI and the uh, and that walk right there. Um, so now, uh, let's see. I think we're going to have a pinch hitter. And that's 33 for the Tigers. And I believe that's Ethan Frey, the sophomore, standing at 6'5", 230. And Jake Johnson will have a little word with his batter. And obviously a huge at-bat. So go ahead and run now at the plate. And you see Coach Barbier now having a word with his is Tyler. Um, big at bat here, though, because the order flips over uh, if uh, Fry gets on here. So, and a good. first pitch strike, good pitch indeed from Jackson Rodriguez. And Frey is another Louisiana native from Rose Pine. Team uh, that was here. Uh, their girls won a state championship in uh, basketball last week. And speaking of basketball, I'm sure you all saw, but number one play on Sports Center was Parkway defeating Walker on a half court heave. And now here's the hit, base hit, it's down. One run comes the score. The throw is in and held up at third base, but what a job by Ethan Frey, and the Tigers won't go away quietly. Big hit there. And a nice job going the other way with it. And uh, it is now a one-run ball game as uh, Southeastern at 27th out oftentimes is the hardest one to get. And LSU showing their championship medal. Man, this game has just got everyone on the edge of their seat. The noise is palpable here in Hammond, Louisiana. Paxton Kling do up for his fifth A.B. of the night. And he'll watch that one low for ball one. And Coach Barbier sticking with Rodriguez, his number one closer, running into a bit of trouble here. One out away from knocking off number two LSU, but man, the tying run 90 feet away, and now the go-ahead run 180 feet away at second. Yeah, that insurance run very important. Southeastern uh, played some small ball to get it. There's a shot into left field. And this one to the wall. LSU spoils the upset bid for now and has roared back for a 4-3 lead. And the Bayou Bengals erupt in the first base dugout. I tell you, just a good piece of hitting there by Kling, who was 0 for 4. Uh, he came in. Uh, there, just forgot about those uh, forward bats, ripped that one, and uh, LSU jumps on top four to three with three here in the ninth inning. <laughs> what heartbreak for Southeastern. Still got in that bat in the ninth, but all the momentum and then some with LSU. And like we said, that, uh, that order turning over, uh, clean the leadoff man, uh, did the job. Uh, for LSU, put them back up top four to three. And I'll tell you what, no disrespect to Josh Pearson, but if you're Jackson Rodriguez, you want this out badly. Oh, Obviously yeah. out number three, but Tommy Tanks is on deck. No, you, yeah, you do not. And I think this is this could be Rodriguez's last batter regardless of, uh, of what happens here. And you got to feel for the young man still. On the mound, Tra needs to throw a strike here, which he does. But man, one out away from glory with a two-run lead and the cardiac cats from Baton Rouge showing you why they were national champions a year ago. And now this one is stabbed over at first. Gonna be a close play and just in the nick of time, Ryan Brome makes the out, but LSU roars back with a three spot in the top of the ninth to reclaim the lead. Can Southeastern on their fellow Lion athletes. But man, I mean, you could hear a pin drop outside of a pocket of purple and gold. Yeah. But man, what a momentum swing if we've ever seen one here in the top of the night. Still 
Three outs, though, the get for Ackenhausen and LSU for the three. The Tigers have stormed back. If you're just now joining us, Southeastern carried a 3-1 lead into the top of the ninth. And the Tigers scored all three runs to take the lead with two outs. And Southeastern surrendered the lead. And now trying just to at least get a run. And I believe this is pinch hitter, this Christian Garcia. Bottom three in the order, seven, eight, and nine as the strikeout there. Garcia goes down swinging. Uh, so Southeastern uh, down to the wire right now, two outs away. Ackenhausen with a key strikeout to start the inning. As we know how important a leadoff walk can prove to be, but to no avail. And now this is Salvaggio, the North Shore High teammate of Garcia. See if he could pick his brother up here and get on base. Owen won the count, Ackenhausen not messing around. Ackenhausen kind of looks like, kind of reminds you of like a left-handed Brian Wilson. Uh, the beard uh, pitched at LSU, of course, without the, uh, the facial hair uh, back then. Uh, but a big, solid, uh, solid pitcher out there on the mound. Ooh. And Salvaggio is left for dead as he strikes out looking in three pitches. And suddenly the Lions, who just seemingly moments ago had a 3-1 lead, just needing one out to win is now down to their final out and trailing by a run. Good pitch here. Uh, the third strikeout in a row uh, by uh, LSU pitching as uh, not much you can do with that. Uh, down low in the zone on the corner. Good pitch by the left-handed closer. And now a huge hack. And I believe this is another pinch batter. I think this is Jake Killingsworth, the senior out of Headland, Alabama, UAB transfer, and another swing and a miss. I'll tell you what, he's not shy at the plate, but hasn't made contact in two huge swings. 0-2, and, and the Tigers are one strike away from pulling this one out. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. LSU survives a huge scare in Hammond, Louisiana. And, man, i got to give props to Southeastern, a 3-1 lead. With one out to go, battled their hearts out, and you can see the frustration, but they should hold their heads high. LSU, that is what champions are made of. Three runs with two outs, and they prevail for the three here in Hammond. You're absolutely right. Uh, quick counting there. Call Roger Clemens, call Kerry Wood. 20 strikeouts for LSU pitching tonight. Uh, that is the story of the ball game. That is the difference in the ball game. Uh, LSU able to get some clutch uh, hits there, especially in the ninth inning. But look, a uh, lot of respect between these two programs. Um, and uh, look, when Southeastern goes over to the box later on this year to play them again, it is going to be uh, a battle. And now we'll throw it down to Mackenzie Fletcher on the field with Jay Johnson. Mackenzie? turn things around right at the end. What did you see from their performance and their resilience toward the end? You know, the depth of our team helped. We were able to, you know, keep them close with the bullpen and then uh, match up there in the end. Uh, Ethan Fry, huge hit right there. Needs to play more. I wish I could play him more, but uh, I'm super proud of him because he just keeps coming to work and he's ready when stuff uh, like that happens. And that's our team, you know, um, really proud of him tonight. You guys have been on the road, now you're heading back home. What do you want to see from their performance from this week going into this weekend? You know, this wasn't a great game. We played great this weekend. Like, we didn't play good, we played great. We did not play great tonight, but, you know, good teams find a way to win when they don't play their best. And like I said, I'm really proud of the resiliency. I mean, that's a great opponent. I mean, you can see why they've won nine games. The competitive spirit of that team, the belief. Um, got something cooking here pretty good. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Right. Good you. luck. Guys, back to you. Thank you, McKenzie. Our final score, four to three.